Okay, I'm just going to explain some common notation in signals and systems because it's, sometimes it's confusing. So we use little characters for signals that are in the time domain. Uh, so x of t, little x of t, is, tells us that it's a time domain signal. And we have a Fourier transform which we often, mostly use capital X for. And it's a function of omega, the angular frequency. So this is often how we write the Fourier transform pair. And that would be okay, uh, not very confusing if those were the only transforms we were considering. Um, but we are going to consider some others and that's why uh, that's where the confusion sometimes comes in. Really we should probably call this a capital for the transform but we should call it uh, the give it the subscript uh, continuous time Fourier transform. And it, yes, it's a function of omega. Um, but we, we tend to just leave off the continuous time Fourier transform subscript on the capital, and we just assume that if you see a capital X, you know it's a transform of X. And when there's only omega, uh, it implies that it's the Fourier transform. And the confusion comes when we start looking at Laplace transforms, because often that's just written X of S. And really, it probably should be, to be clear, it should be the uh, Laplace transform. We should put a subscript on the X saying Lapa Laplace transform. Because any function, the function is defined by the variable, and then the thing in the brackets uh, is really the thing you're plotting against. Um, so the function shouldn't be defined by the thing that's in the brackets. Um, see, S equals sigma plus j omega, and so sometimes to help with the try to avoid confusion, you'll see that this is written, the Fourier transform is sometimes written as x of j omega, because it's when you've got s with sigma equals zero, you've just got j omega, and that is the Fourier transform. So if you take the Laplace transform and you set sigma equal to zero, then you actually do have the Fourier transform. And so sometimes the Fourier transform is written with the j to in indicate that, uh, that it is a Fourier transform. So these things, these two are used interchangeably. Uh, this is probably what it should be, should be used. But all of these are the continuous time Fourier transform. And both of these are the Laplace transform. Okay, also we have discrete time signals and we tend to use square brackets to indicate discrete time. And in this case, n only takes integer values. So we use square brackets in the time domain to indicate that. But uh, the convention is that we don't use square brackets in the transform domain. So in the transform domain, we sometimes uh, still use exactly the same symbol that we used for continuous time, which is one source of potential confusion. So again, really what we should write is capital X discrete time Fourier transform, um, but we don't. Uh, there's another transform, which is the uh, Z transform, which is analogous to the Laplace transform, but for discrete time. So we really should call this X Z transform, which is a function of Z, uh, but often it's just written X of Z. And again, uh, if uh, uh, Z is of a form where if we set the uh, gain equal to zero, then we've got E to the J omega. And so uh, Z equals R e to the j omega. Uh, and so if r equals 1, sorry not 0, if r equals 1, then we've just got e to the j omega and that is the Fourier transform for the discrete time Fourier transform and that's what you've got. That's why the Fourier transform is often written x e to the j omega to indicate that it is a discrete time Fourier transform. So sometimes all you see are these, in which case it's confusing between those two. And sometimes you see these, and sometimes and people often get confused. Why is there a j? Why is there an e to the j? Well, this explains it. This is the continuous time. This is the discrete time. And it comes about because of the special cases of the Laplace when sigma equals 0 and the z when r equals 1.